All right, let's dive into episode four of Gen V and unpack the madness together. So episode four introduces a new character. His name is Tech Knight. He's a smarmy TV producer who is coming to Godolkin University to interview students in the aftermath of the death of Golden Boy and also to teach a guest lecture. He immediately has tons of beef with Dean Shetty because he makes it clear that he's trying to do a hit piece. He wants a takedown and he's going to go after her students. Meanwhile, our beloved Emma, who last episode we were like completely sure was a goner. We learned that she is safe and sound, developing quite the little tryst with Sam. I will say that I really like their energy together. You no, know, they've only known each other at this point for what, a day? I was like, sure, they could be in love. This episode also had some interesting developments with Jordan, who is a bi-gender character on the show. I believe in a previous video, I incorrectly said gender fluid. One of my followers educated me that Jordan is in fact bi-gender, so sorry about that. But there was a really interesting moment in class where Ted Knight, this kind of smarmy douchebag guy, he is giving an example to the students of interrogation tactics. And so he picks Marie, even though she doesn't raise her hand. She's sitting in the center and he's asking her to recount for the hundredth time the day the golden boy passed and everything that happened. We as the audience have the information that she was about to be kicked out of Godolkin, but none of her peers know this and she has been really touted as the hero, even though she acknowledges that Jordan did a lot of the fighting against Golden Boy. And in a previous episode, we talked about how this show just like openly explores the dark side of PR especially because as the trustees have made clear to Jordan, which is super effed up, that Jordan's numbers aren't polling as well. So Jordan doesn't make as good of a face of the organization as Marie does. We talked a little bit about queer discrimination, things like that. But anywho, our beloved Marie, who I love, let's slip during this interrogation that it was in fact Jordan who did the majority of the fighting. Naturally, the dean is completely pissed because she's really, along with the entire PR outfit of Vought, sold this kind of Marie is the savior of Godolkin University message. And she explicitly told Ted, like, don't go after any of my students. Interestingly, this unlocks a sort of tension that has existed between Jordan and Marie that has activated <laughs> this arc of enemies to lovers that I didn't even know I wanted to see. But after it happened, I was like, you know what? You know what? I'm here for it. So they're back in Marie's room and they're arguing. And she's like, why would you do that? And Marie's like, you quite literally told me to do that like a million times. Like you literally were like, tell people the truth. I, I shouldn't be ranked number five, all this stuff. And then she kind of softened. She's like, but I didn't want you to take down yourself with it. And then all of a sudden it's like, what? Also, Marie has a really good line during that. And she's like, sometimes people do things because they don't have a motive, but just because they're like a human being. But then because Jordan can change um, appearance whenever they want, Jordan changes into their male form. And they have a steamy makeout session. It was honestly everything. Now, the biggest questions I have leaving episode four, primarily also just the reveal about Emma that it can go both directions with her size thing was really fascinating. But I can gather from the preview for next week that some sort of memory alteration has happened where they have been stopped in this moment, their memories have been taken and they're like being kind of reset Naturally, if they have this like huge underground woods thing, I think Dean Chetty could very quickly orchestrate this. But interesting choice to, to do that to the viewers to just cut us off. Instead of giving us the, the knowledge and letting the characters be wondering, we as the viewers too are like have no idea what's going on. It was an interesting stylistic writing choice. I'm curious though what you think happened. My thought is that somehow Dean Chetty's forces have, you know, inoculated all these people or whatever the word is, like put them down somehow tampered with their memories and like put them all back in their various locations. But how would they even know to put Marie and Jordan together in bed? Like that's what I was also like, if that is the case, like how did that happen? Or is it all just like a elaborate dream that Marie was having? Because Emma's size thing, she's never revealed before that she could get big. And it feels like in a world of superheroes that that would be kind of like a big deal and would make her kind of like a formidable threat. And if Marie was dreaming this whole sequence, then it would make sense that Emma never revealed that because Marie would then just be like, you know, experimenting in her mind. But I don't know. It was pretty crazy. Also, everything that happened with Chance Perdomo and the PR, like IRL, that was fascinating. Apparently, we're going to get a Jensen Ackles cameo at some point this season, which I'm looking forward to. And yeah, I think I covered everything. In a previous video, I talked about the exploding, you know what? And yeah, if there's anything I didn't talk about, let me know and I'll make another video. But I thought this was a really good episode. I think that this show is extremely strong. It's kept my attention the entire time and I feel really invested in all these characters. 
I primarily am invested in Marie and Emma. I think those are my two favorites. I think Marie, Emma, and Jordan are probably my three favorite characters on the whole show. But everyone, every one of these characters is very rich, very complex, very interesting. And I think introducing smarmy, awful characters like this is really fascinating because contextualizing the power dynamics of what people's lives are like after Godolkin, who aren't in the Seven, but who occupy like a lot of media power, like what power they exercise over others, I think is fascinating. But yeah, great episode. I loved it. What did you think, babes?